Question 1. If God is a trinity consisting of Father, Son and Holy Spirit, then why don't Jews believe in a triune God? Note that we are not talking about the modern Christian sect known as the Messianic Jews, but rather proper Jews who follow Judaism and gather at synagogues on Saturdays. If the God of the Bible is indeed a trinity, it would mean that the Old Testament speaks of a triune God. If this were true, then Jews who had the Old Testament much before the Christians would have been the first Trinitarians. They would have been the first to teach the idea of a triune God. Over the centuries, Jewish scholars have written tons of literature on their religion, yet Jewish scholars have never arrived at the, the conclusion that God is a trinity of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The very idea of such a triune God is completely foreign to Judaism. Christians might claim that the Old Testament and various other Jewish texts contain proof of God being triune and not an absolute one, but they are simply projecting the idea of the Christian trinity onto the texts in question. Jews interpret those same texts very differently, and have never derived from them, the idea of a triune God. Question 2. If God is a trinity that includes Jesus, then why did Jesus teach his followers to pray only to the Father? The Lord's Prayer is the only prayer that Jesus ever taught during his life on earth. It can be found in Matthew chapter 6 verses 9 to 13 and Luke chapter 11 verses 2 to 4. The Lord's Prayer is addressed only to the Father in heaven. When Christians recite it, they hallow the name of the Father, not that of Jesus. They declare that the Father's will be done, not the will of Jesus. There is no mention of a Trinity or the Son or the Holy Spirit. If God is a trinity, and Jesus was part of that trinity, then Jesus would have taught his followers to pray to the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. But this is not the case. In addition to the Lord's Prayer, Jesus teaches his followers on many occasions that the Father is the only person of the so-called trinity that is to be worshipped. For example, Matthew chapter 6 verse 6 and John chapter 4 verse 23. Question 3. If God is a trinity, and God the Son lived among humans as Jesus, then it implies God was seen by many. So why does Jesus' own disciple, John, write, No man has ever seen God. In 1 John chapter 4 verse 12, we read, No man has ever seen God. Bear in mind that this book of the New Testament was written long after Jesus departed from the earth. So, if Jesus was really God in the flesh, then his disciple, John, saw God every time he saw Jesus. But strangely, John writes, no man has ever seen God. John the disciple is implying that his master, Jesus, whom he saw every day for three and a half years, was not God. We are aware that there are other verses in books attributed to John that Christians use as proof texts for the divinity of Jesus. But the problem is that John's bold statement in 1 John chapter 4 verse 12, no man has ever seen God, is an extremely clear-cut statement that stands on its own. It is self-explanatory and cannot be interpreted to mean anything else. If the disciple John, who saw Jesus face to face, believes no man has ever seen God, there's no reason for anyone else to think Jesus was God.